Welcome to Today of All Days, episode 115. Yellow blue, I love chewing gum. Today is Stop Popping Those Bubbles So Loud Saturday, September 30th, 2017. And today is... Chewing Gum Day! Well, that's it. That's the episode. People of the world have had the urge to chew throughout the day, and different cultures have come up with many ways of dealing with this craving. The first commercial chewing gum was sold in 1848 by John B. Curtis. Wow, 1848. I never put that in those period pieces. Come on, guys, it's the little details that draw your audience in. I would love to see that. Minty? Is this dentine ice? No. This is Mentos gum. Not a proud sponsor. That's why I don't have anything in my hand. The Native Americans would chew on resin from the sap of spruce trees. Curtis took this idea and started commercializing it, just like they did with all of the other Native American ingenuities. In 1850, a paraffin wax chewing gum was created. To maintain its sweetness, chewers would roll their gum on a plate of powdered sugar when the gum lost its sweetness. So, there are many, 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 many precursors to the modern day chewing gum. So, I wanted to devise a question answer session slash quiz slash maybe exam, right? And you're the testee. So. I'm one of the greatest testees in the world. <laughs> I'm going to say a particular kind of people, right? And I want you to tell me what you think they chewed on before chewing gum. Oh, okay. 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 So, and you do get at least a hint from... For each one. Alright? Number one. The ancient Greeks. I believe that the ancient Greeks would have chewed on olives. Olives come from this. A vine. Ooh. Olives don't come from a vine. Oh, they're on a tree. Mm Hmm? Pertaining to a tree? They would chew on tree bark. Yes, they would. It was the mastic tree bark. Good job. Up next, we have the Eskimos. Whoa. Okay. Ice. No. A smoked skin. Like a fish skin. Very, very close. The Eskimos would actually chew on blubber. Oh. So... I, I can maybe give you half a point for that. Up next, we have the South Americans. Ooh, South Americans. Mm. Mm. Sugar cane. No, but it. I'll give you a hint. Okay. Just as the native people of Thailand would sometimes chew on the kratom leaves throughout the day, the people of South America would chew on... Cacao leaves. Coca leaves. Oh, coca leaves. Yes. Very nice. Up next, we have China. A variety of tea leaves. No. A particular tea leaf? No, not a leaf. Not a leaf. They would have chewed on a different part of the plant. A root. Mm Mm-hmm. Ginger root. No, but starts with the first letter that you just used. Ginseng! Yes, they would chew on ginseng root. And lastly, we have the early settlers of the United States. These are the hardest ones. Mm. We don't know our own history. I know. They don't teach it to us. (laughs) We come from so many different, we're kind of a goulash. So it's like, it could be any of these things. But it is unique. Really? Well, unique to America. Okay. 
Okay. Ooh, into America. Okay. They would have chewed on tobacco leaves. Yes, they would have. Yeah! Yep. Chew or tobacco chew or whatever you want to call it is actually the earliest form of some kind of chewing satiation Ooh. in America. Yep, chewing on some good old back of leaves. So, we want to know, when you're bored and you feel like chewing on something, what do you chew on? Is it a pencil? Is it a pencil eraser? I've seen people do that. Is it is it the side of a notebook? Is it a piece of gum? Is it your nails? Let us know in the comment section below. And now, we're going to skip over to... International, International Translation Day! Day. Some of us may have a difficult time learning new languages. These days, many countries around the world begin teaching a second language in the early years of school, which makes it a bit easier. Although, many students in the U.S. dread having to learn any other language besides English. Ironically, English wouldn't even exist today if it wasn't for the fusion of a bunch of different languages into one. English is a product of Old Norman and a whole slew of mainly Germanic dialects from Germany, the Netherlands, Denmark, other Scandinavian areas, Central European areas. It goes on. Even still, the Old or Middle English spoken by our ancestors is very different from the modern English we speak today. After the Renaissance, English took on many characteristics of Latin, French, and Ancient Greek. This led to what is called the Great Vowel Shift, making modern English what it is today. So, I also devised a little quiz slash exam slash testing of knowledge for you today. Oh, I'm the other testee. I'm going to give you a few simple words. And your goal is to pronounce the words like you think our medieval brethren would have mm. before the okay. great vowel shift. Okay. Your first word is meat, as in, it's nice to meet you. Mmm, meat. I'd say maybe it's something more close to the lines of, like, mate. Oh, it is a shorter sounding vowel. Met? Yes! Really? Yes! Nice to met you. Exactly! Very okay. nice. And now the second one is meat. As in, I love grilled meat. Might. No. Oh, moat. No. <laughs> moot. <laughs> no, it is actually... Met. Met? met? Really? Oh... Even though they took on so two the different spellings. Yeah. Well, trick question. Mm -hmm. Now, the third. Mate, as in, he's my mate. I want to say might. Oh, no. He's moat. No? I'll give you a hint. Imagine what it would be like if we didn't add more vowels to the end of our words. How would we pronounce Oh, Matt? That? Yeah. Really? Mm -hmm. Next we have out, as in, let's get out of here! Oot. Yes, it is! You! Oot and a boot the place. Well, it's, got, it's time to go oot and a boot. <laughs> Next we have bite, as in, take a little bite. A bit. Ooh, close ish. A boat. No. Oh, bitty. No. A closer? But closer, yeah. Bitey? No. Bitty? Mm -hmm. Bodey? No. Booty? That's it. I'm oh. drawing the line. It's beat. Oh. Take a beat out of life. <laughs> <laughs> How'd I get all these beats? <laughs> <laughs> now, mm. we have boot. As in, hand me my boot. Bet. No. Bought. Close. Boat? Yes. Really? Get yourself a pair of boats. So if you say, man, I'm going to go sail away in my boat, they will look at you like you're crazy yeah. and throw you a pair of boots. Mm-hmm. Now, finally, the last one. I feel like this one might be tricky. Mm. Okay. It's 
boat, as in, I've got a sailboat. I want to say a bale. No. A bast. Mm-mm. My anywhere remotely close. <laughs> a, does it sound like boat at all? Kind of. So I guess you could say the vowels don't necessarily change. It's just how you pronounce them. Mm. So like a boet? Mm-mm. Boet? Mm-mm. Still one syllable. Bot? Yes! Really? It's a bot. Yes! It's bot time. Yep. Hand me my boats, because I'm going sailing on my bot. <laughs> Crazy. I wouldn't mind learning how to talk like that just to confuse people. That's like what? You don't understand what I'm saying? I'm speaking true English here. Yeah, it's like, hey, go over to my boot. And they'd be like, well, why you got me at your trunk? And that concludes our festivities for today. Well, it looks like today might be a day for learning, so get out there, try something new, and try to learn you something, too, on this day. Today of all days. Today of all days. And we will see y'all Monday. Bye. Bye.